In this presentation, what I am going to do is we're going to compute the char uh, characteristic polynomial of this equation. Now we're going to use this to compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors and so on, but specifically what I'm interested in is uh, right now, for this instant, I'm interested in this thing called the characteristic polynomial, also known as the characteristic equation. Okay, so that's the first thing, I, that's the sort of a building block on their way to developing, uh, computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors, okay? The characteristic polynomial, also known as the characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation or characteristic polynomial, I'll use both names interchangeably. Essentially what we have to do is compute the solution to this. Now this will actually work out as a polynomial expressed in terms of lambda. Now lambda, the solutions to lambda are the eigenvectors which we solve. But for the my, for the time being, it's just an equa uh, an, uh, an expression. Now, in some books you get it as a minus lambda i, and in other books you get it as a or lambda i minus a. Get the determinant of that. It actually doesn't matter. They're both right. Um, so it doesn't matter which way you do. Whatever uh, way it sort of looks easiest when you're trying to do it up in pen and paper calculations. Just pick ever whichever one suits you. Now the idea of a characteristic polynomial is you solve for the values of lambda. So uh, if A here is a 3 by 3 matrix, okay, so we should have three possible solutions, okay, they may not necessarily be unique, and in fact in the this example, they don't have, they're not unique, but there's usually three solutions. They may not necessarily be three, uh, three unique solutions, but three solutions. If there were, for n by n case, the n by n case, there would be, uh, for in terms of the size of A, the dimensions of A, there would be n solutions for lambda. Okay, now lambda again is related to the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, but we're not going to sort of worry about that just yet. We're going to just concentrate on the characteristic polynomial. So let's have a look at this here. I, part of our uh, po uh, characteristic polynomial is this expression here, lambda times i, and I, this, the lambda times i is the identity matrix. So for the time being, what we're going to do is treat lambda as a single scalar. Okay, so lambda times the identity matrix essentially what you would end up with is something like this okay uh, lambdas are on the diagonal zeros elsewhere okay so moving along uh, using our example that we have already uh, I'm going to use it uh, express it in the for form determinant of lambda i minus a. Now essentially what I'm going to do here is actually what we're going to get is the determinant of this expression here. So first off, uh, where the bar there is the bars on either side are for the, the notation for determinants. Okay. So essentially what I'm going to do is just simplify this equation again. Lambda i minus a essentially just to have a nice easy looking answer. Essentially what we've got to do is this. Uh, I'll write a few workings here but this the first one is lambda minus zero. 0 minus 0 and 0 minus minus 2. It's the top row uh, for each. That works out to be lambda 0 and plus 2. Okay. Uh, next line is, let's work it out a little bit more. Um, 0 minus 1. Okay. This here and this here. Uh, lambda minus 2, let's give it that first, so uh, lambda minus 2 and 0 minus 1, and there we have it again, uh, minus 1, lambda minus 2 and minus 1. Now I'm just going to sort of uh, write out that the last one is, is minus 1, 0 and lambda minus 3, that's the bottom row. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I, I'm just going to, just the, the, the workings are sort of clutter things up now, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And what we're going to do now is get the determinant of that matrix there, okay. So essentially what you try to do is pick a row or column, and I, if you, essentially it's the, ter, the determinant of this matrix. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is pick a row or column, I'm going to pick this. Uh, no, I won't. I'll actually just pick the top row. Just keep it nice and simple. Uh, 
I'm going to pick this column here, row here, okay, and what we'll do is get the determinant of uh, based on that, okay. Now, if you're not familiar with how to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, uh, I suggest you check up on that first, because I'm not going to sort of explain that step at all. I'm just going to sort of state that it's lambda, lambda, times the determinant of its submatrix, okay which is what you get when you subtract the first row and first column where lambda is and we have that ex expression there minus zero well that goes to zero automatically but that's for the because it's the second element here and then plus two times the submatrix for the that last element there minus one lambda minus two minus one and zero okay I was just checking my uh, workings in my head so working this out what we get is lambda uh, times lambda minus two times lambda minus three uh, the next bit is minus zero times minus one which is just zero so I'm going to sort of uh, skip the rest of it okay uh, essentially what I'm sort of saying is the rest of the that determinant of that submatrix just works out to be zero so I'm just going to skip past that I'm just very conscious of time and space for this particular video plus two times uh, minus one times zero is just zero so minus minus one times lambda minus two okay now um, you might sort of spot that we might be able to come up with a way that we, we can sort of quickly identify a factorization that you might sort of spot well for both sides we might be able to factor out lambda minus two which helps us solve it but we're not going to do that unfortunately I'm going to sort of make uh, keep things awkward do you know what I will I will actually just mention that bit we have lambda minus two and lambda minus two so what I'm going to do is just incorporate that uh, it just might help speed things up so what I'm going to do is multiply the lambda and the lambda minus three part and we get lambda squared minus three lambda okay times lambda minus two and on this side we have two times uh, that'll, that'll work out there to be plus one so plus two times lambda minus two okay on this side so altogether we would have lambda minus two times lambda squared minus three lambda plus two okay and that actually means that we should be able to uh, well actually you might be able to sort of oh we can actually factorize that really really quickly and actually you probably will so I'll just actually do that I don't actually mean to do that so this is lambda minus two times lambda minus two times lambda minus one that is the uh, uh, characteristic polynomial the roots for the characteristic polynomial so the answer actually will work out to be one at uh, one two and two now I'm going to it doesn't always work out that way that you would be able to spot um, lambda minus two and lambda minus two so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of just ignore that unfortunately and just sort of work on the basis that we cannot identify lambda minus two uh, or it doesn't work out so easily so what I get when I multiply this out is lambda cubed minus three lambda squared plus two lambda minus two lambda squared um, plus six lambda minus four okay and when I add that up to all together what I get is I just made a bit of extra space there uh, just to sort of when I simplify that essentially what I get is lambda cubed minus 5 lambda squared plus 8 lambda minus 4 now specifically that is specifically what we were asked for that is the polynomial the characteristic polynomial that we require and 
look, unfortunately, we got luck in this case that very obvious, uh, it, it, the way we calculated it out, it became very clear that lambda minus 2 was a root or a sort of a factor and that we could sort of break it down very quickly but you will not get that in a lot of occasions anyway to cut a long story short this is our characteristic polynomial and in the next video what I'm going to do is talk about how we will be able to uh, solve them without having to multiply through um, or having to divide through very awkward calculations so I'm going to stop it there and then start up my next video shortly